The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark The Beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from the beginning of the Gospel of St. Mark. We have been reflecting on how to prepare for the coming of the Lord, preparing the way of the Lord. And the three readings blend very well. They provide to us different aspects of this whole spirituality of preparing the way of the Lord. And for this Sunday, the Gospel presents to us the figure of John the Baptist. In him, in his person, we find, as it were, the summary of how we prepare for the coming of the Lord. In the first reading from Isaiah, we already heard about this voice crying out in the wilderness, but with two different messages. First, preparing a straight path for the Lord. The Lord who will lead His people as a shepherd back home to liberate them, to restore them. But how will we prepare the way of the Lord? The valleys should be filled in. The mountains and hills should be leveled. So the excesses of our lives and also the omissions and lacks in our lives must all be made straight. Not only for ourselves, but we should call on other people to, in a way, straighten up their lives. But there is another call to focus on the Lord who is coming. This is an important voice in our time. Christmas has been associated with many, many things and many events, often to the forgetfulness of the Lord who comes. So in the desert, according to Isaiah, there is this voice that says, the Lord is coming. And that is a good way to prepare. In the second reading from the second letter of Peter, we see again two other aspects of preparing the way of the Lord. First, let God be God. Let God come in God's own time and in God's own way. We prepare for the coming of the Lord by letting go of our preconceived ideas and expectations. Sometimes we impose on God how He should come to us, how God and when God should come to us. No, preparing for God's coming means allowing God the divine freedom to come in a way that He sees fit. And secondly, the period God gives us the period of waiting for His coming is a time for repentance. These four points that we have raised so far, coming from Isaiah and the second reading, are all combined in the Gospel, centered on the figure of John the Baptizer. In the beginning of the Gospel of St. Mark, we see that the gospel of Jesus Christ begins with the proclamation of John the Baptist in fulfillment of the first reading from Isaiah. The voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare a straight path for the Lord. 
So Isaiah is fulfilled in John the Baptizer. John the Baptizer. As far as I know, I might be uh, uh, wrong in this uh, element, but as far as I know, he is the only biblical figure that is named the Baptist, the baptizer. It's not enough to call him John, but he would always be called the baptizer. And I think in the early church, even in the early writings about the history of Christianity, that was retained. The precursor for the coming of the Lord, John, was distinguished, was known for having baptized people. He, in the desert, calling on people, inviting them to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, repentance of sins. This blends very well with what the second letter of Peter talks about in the second reading. Preparing the way of the Lord and also repentance, for the Lord is the one who will come. But let me add two points from the gospel. The baptism that John did in the River Jordan, he immersed people in the waters of the Jordan. He, well, people were baptized by John. This is significant for our preparation for the coming of the Lord. Nobody baptizes himself or herself. <laughs> you do not say, I baptized myself. Even in the preparation for the coming of the Lord, John, the one sent by God, baptizes other people for the, for the forgiveness of sins. As they are immersed by John in the waters of the Jordan, they confessed their sins. What is this all about? It tells us that repentance in the end is God's gift, mediated very often by some significant people. We cannot boast of conversion by our own efforts. We cannot boast to the world that we were able to reach the state of repentance, full repentance for sins, because we relied on our own energies. No. Repentance is first and foremost God's action in us. God's call coming to us through many people and events. The many John the Baptists, of our lives. Part of repentance is the humility to recognize that we need God to call us to repentance. Left to ourselves, left to ourselves, we should be humble, truthful to admit this. Left to ourselves, we might distance ourselves more from God. But it is only by God's grace that we have the courage and the humility to admit, I have sinned and I need to be immersed again in the grace of God. True repentance comes with humility. I need to be guided. The vision of, of Isaiah in the first reading, the people of Israel could not go home by themselves. God must lead them home. In the same way, John, must immerse the people confessing their sins in water. Let us beg the Lord for the grace of true repentance. And secondly, John the Baptist did not call attention to himself. He called attention to the one who will come after him. In the first reading, this was already indicated. The voice must say, here is the Lord. That voice, John the Baptist, did not call only for repentance, but also called people to focus on the one who will come after him. 
he says, he baptizes using water. But there is someone greater than him who will baptize by the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is a different type of baptism. For the Holy Spirit is the very life, power of God. While the baptism of John might be good, but it is external. The internal cleansing of the human heart, the conscience, can be done only by Jesus, who will give us the Holy Spirit. And in our hearts, with the power and life of God, the Holy Spirit being given by Jesus, in our hearts, we will experience the new heavens, the new earth, the liberation, the salvation promised by God in the one who will come. What a beautiful way to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Let us be open to God's surprises. God comes to us in His way, but we should be there to see Him, to repent, to assume the Holy Spirit giving us new life, thanks to the One who will come. You know, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to uh, welcome here in Manila a group of foreign students, high school students, who were sent by their school uh, to do some immersion, uh, have some immersion experiences here in, in the Philippines, especially interacting with their fellow youth who are quite poor, underprivileged. You know? And I happened to, uh, part of their program was uh, an encounter with the Archbishop of Manila. So I listened to their stories and uh, I was really amazed at how a few days of seeing the life of our poor street children who are struggling, uh, those few days have transformed these foreign students. And uh, one of them talked with me. She was able to listen to the story of a girl of her same age who lived on the street, abandoned by her father. But thanks to a foundation, she's now back to school. But this foreigner said, you know, listening to her, I felt like another spirit was poured in my heart. And I started reviewing my own life. How come I enjoy a lot of the amenities of a good life, but I still feel bored. But this girl who grew up on the streets, who had every reason to be bitter, yet there is hope in her. There is energy in her. Her smile is genuine. There is true happiness in her. The Lord is with her. That is Advent. That is preparing for the way of the Lord. Seeing the Lord coming to me, calling me to repentance and experiencing a new heaven and a new earth. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.